Greetings and welcome back, gentles and ladiesmen, to another exciting episode of Exo Plays Super Mario 64 DS. And hopefully, with the changes I made to my recording setup, you guys are getting all 30 frames per second, not just 30 frames sometimes and 25 frames per second other times. Which is the whole reason I did re try to do this. Part of the problem was I was originally I was going to use this one border uh, that had the top screen at five times in a 4K frame, 10 times actually in a 4K frame, and then the, the bottom screen with the map in, I think, three times on the on the bottom, you know. I'll show a picture of that border here so you guys could see it, what it would have looked like. And, you know, I was totally gonna do that. By the way, this is one of the few new stages in Super Mario 64 DS, as you can see, and we're gonna use our Yoshi egg to hit that guy. So eggs are actually pretty useful, uh, but the only problem is Yoshi's kind of the only character in the game you have to go out of your way to play as. Like with any other character, you could just grab a cap, but with Yoshi, you can't really do that. You have uh, to go to a specific place to switch to Yoshi. Uh, thankfully, if you know that, you can still kind of plan a route through the game, because you know that's that's what I like about collectathons is that, I don't know, get, I guess one thing at a time, the reason I didn't end up using that one border is that it, that it seemed to cause the program OBS to drop frames in the game capture. Uh, so that's why I'm going with strictly just the top screen, the bottom screen, or both. Because in order to get both the screens going, I basically had to have two of both screens. I have tried uh, doing the screen split feature, uh, where, you know, in the DS Capture program where it puts them in two separate windows. I have tried that, but it, I don't know, it just, OBS does not want to seem to record that, so I couldn't do that. So the only way to do that was to have four screens, essentially, and use black stuff to cover up the rest, and it just, I think that's what was causing part of the, the frame drops to go on. This is another one of the new levels in the game, by the way. Uh, most of the new uh, level new levels are boss stages that you play to unlock the other characters. There are a couple of stars we can get here, uh, but we can't get them right now because we need all four characters, or rather the, the, the three human characters, in order to acquire them. So for the time being, we're going to be skipping that and just going straight to the boss. Um... Yeah, so I, I I have a feeling that that was part of why I was dropping frames. The other reason was I was using a different encoding method. <laughs> I'm no ordinary Goomba. I'm Goombas, the great Goomba, the grand Pooba Goomba. That Mario always stomps on us, but now the tables have turned. I locked him up in a room. I bet he's crying like a baby. I have no business with you, so scram. There's no way a prehistoric wimp like you could beat my stupendous stomps. Alright, so if you played a video game called Paper Mario, how did I manage to do that? Okay. It is not what I intended, I assure you, folks in the audience. This boss is not that difficult, but if you played a video game called Paper Mario, then you probably recognize this guy. He went by a different name back in the day. Uh, but, yeah, this is Goom Boss, and he is basically the Goomba King from Paper Mario, the boss of the prologue chapter for that game. And he, I mean, look at him, he looks the same, it's the same character design. I mean, he's called something different, I don't know why they couldn't just call him Goomba King. Come to think of it, um, all of the boss bosses that, actually two of them anyway, are references to other Mario games. Like, for example, uh, we're going to be finding a character from Luigi's Mansion later. <sighs> Would you just hit him, game? Yeah, I guess pro strat for this fight, don't try to use eggs, because every time I do, it just doesn't seem to work. Now, I think what they expect you to do is run all the way around him, but that takes too long, so instead, I recommend doing this. Oh, I guess I did hit him with the egg. Beaten by a pipsqueak like you, how did that happen? Is it just the Goomba's fate to lose? I have Mario locked up in a room, you know. This key will open the door to his room. I still can't believe you beat me. And then he explodes. 
into a bunch of Goombas. So I don't know if he, that's what he's always like. Like the, the Goomba King from the Paper Mario uh, was like an ordinary Goomba that Bowser used the Star Rod to power up. But I guess this guy is just like a bunch of Goombas mushed together. Maybe like a Kamek transformation? I don't know. It's not explained. <laughs> Uh, but with this key, we can now rescue Mario and play as him, so if you were concerned that it was going to take us too long to play as Mario, it only took me about 25 minutes to unlock him, so... Yeah, and then the rest of the game, you could play as him if you want. If if you don't like the other characters and you just want to play as Mario, you can beat the game that way. In, f in fact, you have to be Mario to finish the game. You, you can't fight... You can't fight the final boss without playing as Mario, which is kind of weird. Um, and it's like, I feel like they did a really good job giving you reasons to play as the other characters. Yeah, I, well, Luigi and Yoshi, anyway. But with Mario, he just seems like, you know, he's like the one who is like everybody else. You know, he's the, the well-rounded character, so to speak. Um, and you might be wondering, well, if we can unlock Mario, why aren't you playing as him right now? And there's a good reason for that. Uh, there's some... There are some... Come on, game. You're, you're killing me here. There are some stars that we cannot get in this particular level, Cool Cool Mountain, without playing as Yoshi. So, before before we unlock Mario and play as him for a long period of time, I'm just going to go ahead and take care of that real quick. Alright, and uh, when, you, when you throw eggs at a wall, that counts as beating that enemy, and then you get, you know, stuff. Uh, the, the coins that they would have dropped. So, we are actually going to be getting the 100 coin star now. And why might you be asking, are we doing that? Well, you know, it's like I said in the last part, this game kind of forces you to leave the stage every time you get a star, with the exception of the 100 coin star. So in terms of making this making this run, tightening it up for, uh, you know, speed running purposes and whatnot, because that's, you know, I like casually speedrunning collectathons. That's what I think is fun about them is like knowing where everything is so that you can beat the game to 100% as fast as possible. And you know, because of Super Mario 64 kicking you out after every star, you know, it's not as easy to speedrun it, I guess, as some other collectathons like Spyro 1 comes to mind or Banjo Kazooie. Uh, so the only the only real ways that you can tighten up your run, so to speak, is to try to get 100 coin stars alongside regular stars in the stage. So that's 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 what I'm going to be doing, and it does make the runs more convenient. Like as you can see, we've already got 90 coins just from playing that slide. Then that's the star pops out there. We grab that. We leave the level. Um, so before we get it, we just need to grab 10 more coins, and Bob's your uncle. Who's there? Who woke me up? It's still daylight, I should be sleeping. Hey, as long as I'm awake, why not take a short flight with me? And standard mode, press B, yeah, we don't need to read that. Who? What do you guys think of my owl voice? It's not as good as, uh... It's not as good as my uh, owl from Rita the Pooh. Egad, my baby! Have you seen my baby? She's the most precious baby in the whole world. They say she has my beak. I just can't remember where I left her. Let's see, I stopped for herring and ice cubes, then I... Oh, I just don't know. Oh yeah, so we'll, we'll worry about that star later, but we just need to grab a few more coins here and we'll be up to 100. Pro tip! Wherever you happen to be in a level, when you get 100 coins is where the the 100 coin star will show up. So that means that if you get your 100 coin star in that slide back there, then that's where it's going to pop up and since you can't go back to grab it, you're you're fucked. And if you come back to the slide afterwards and try to get it then, it'll have disappeared. So you know, pro strat, just go to the slide first or as early on as possible and then make sure that that 100th coin that you get is in the main level itself so you can grab the 100 coin star then. And like I said, it doesn't kick you out, so I don't know why every star in the game couldn't have been like that. Like, I don't know, there's like the tower that pops up in the top of Womp's Fortress, like, obviously that's like one example where, you know, between star 1 and star 2 of that level, something changes, you know? 
But otherwise, I don't really get the point. I don't know why it, it couldn't just be, you know, I don't know. But still, you could see how much faster it is to to get the 100 coin star alongside a regular star. Now we now we don't have we basically saved ourselves enough another trip to the level later on. And the 100 coin stars out of the way, so we don't have to worry about that stuff anymore. So that is the baby penguin we need to bring back, but we're actually gonna go do this star real quick first. I'm the world champion sledder. I may be bulky, but I'm very fast. How about a race? Now to race this guy, you do not have to be Mario, so thankfully. Pro tips for this star, uh, first of all, there are a couple of shortcuts you can take, like for example, coming up along this wall here, there will be a line of coins going into the wall. If you follow that, that takes you straight to the bottom. It's a shortcut. Uh, but if you try to take that shortcut or fall off part of the course and land on a later part of it, the penguin will accuse you of cheating and you won't get the star. So just play the slide like normal. Trust me, it'll make it so that you'll save yourself another trip through this level. As you can see, we we still won handily, so it's it's all good, fam. Oh, you broke my record! Unbelievable! I heard you were the coolest, now you've proven you're also the fastest! I can't give you a gold medal, but here, take the star instead! You've earned it! Alright, so Master Mr. Penguin Face over there just gave us a star. Alright. So, like I said, we do have to be a Mario in order to get that baby penguin, so it just seemed to make the most sense to go grab that one first. And I say next we go for red coins, because that just seems to make the most sense. Uh, now with 12 stars, we can actually go fight Bowser right now, but, you know, it's like I said, the strength of Super Mario 64 is that you can do stuff in whatever order you want. Oh. Oh, he just tells you where the, where the Mario caps are. I see. So, like I said, we have to be Yoshi to get certain stars in this level. And specifically, that would be this ice cube over here. Like, as you can see, uh, Yoshi has the ability to lick up fire and then breathe it to melt ice. Uh, Mario and the rest of the guys cannot do that, so that's the only way you can get all eight red coins in the stage. And that is a difference from the original game. These ice cube red coins were not in it. Like, I think you still had to go down to this platform here to get a red coin, but that red coin was not frozen, is the point. Let's see, and there's another one. I believe there are three more down here in this area right there. Uh, and we could probably skip that Mario Cat for now. Woo, that was a close one. I almost fell right off that ledge. Um, I don't know. Do I want to talk about the controls yet? I feel like people are expecting me to, so... Uh, I mean, I'm, I am going to talk about them eventually, but I don't know. Uh, we still got plenty of level left, so I might as well. <laughs> Obviously, the DS does not have an analog stick, unlike the N64. So the only way that they could con that you can control your character in this game is either with the D-pad or with the touchscreen. Uh, the touchscreen is an option that I haven't explored fully. We're gonna talk to this guy now, just so I don't have to do it later. It's like I said, for some reason you have to talk to the red bombs to unlock the cannon instead of them just being available from the get-go. I don't know why. I think it's supposed to be like a little platforming challenge, like you're supposed to explore the level and find the red bob -omb, but it's just like, I don't know, in practice it always ends up being, I need to get the star that requires the cannon, but I can't use the cannon because of reasons. You know, and that's just annoying, so, yeah. So there are two more red coins up there, so yeah, so, touch screen is an option I haven't explored, but still we have the D-pad, and it's, it is one of those things where, it, and it was a point in my review where I said that the camera control, especially, is way better in the remake, like, no question. Like, it is so easy to point the camera where I want it to go, it is so easy to keep moving straight like this, you know what I mean? Whereas in the original, the camera always got stuck on everything, and it was never in the right place to where you could see what you wanted to see. So that is one thing that they definitely improved, but it's like, Otherwise, this new control scheme is something that requires some growing pains. And it's like, the way I put it in the review was, I got used to it after about five minutes. 
and I do feel like if you give this a chance and, you know, but I feel like, especially with the feedback I got in the review, like, I know it seemed to go both ways. Some people were like, you know, I've been playing this version for a very long time. I'm used to how this controls. I think it works just fine. And then there are other people who are like, I speed run the Nintendo 64 version a lot. I play it a lot. I'm very used to this working in a specific way with the analog stick. I just cannot wrap. I just cannot learn this D-pad movement system. And that's fine. I totally understand that if that's how people feel. If they can't make this new control scheme work for them, you know, that's, you know, I, I can respect that. Uh, because, you know, as as much as I can make this work for me right now, and as much as I clicked with it during the review, after having not played this game, this version, a while since the review, basically, and having played a shit ton of Super Mario Sunshine and Super Mario Odyssey since that came out recently, and being used to having that analog movement, coming back to this, I did have, you know, I did have kind of a, I don't know, I don't, I almost want to say culture shock, but there was kind of like a, I defended this in the review kind of feeling in my head, like, this, this doesn't feel right, this feels a bit jank. Uh, but the more I played the game and the more I got used to it, now it just feels second nature to me and I can play this no problem. It's kind of like the, the Star Fox Zero... Ah, shit, I'm totally screwed. Alright, uh, at the very least I'm gonna have to go back up and grab that penguin again. There's not really a good way. There is a, another penguin up here, but that is not... That is not the penguin mother's kid. This is some other penguin. Like, I'll, I'll show it off because the dialogue's funny, but you guys can see it looks identical to the other baby penguin, but you give it to her and she's like, That's not my baby. She looks nothing like me. Her parents must be worried sick. And then he just drops it. Um, so yeah, that other baby penguin fell off the edge. And I don't know, technically these worlds aren't real. They're like, creation things that Bowser created in the paintings but I don't know I guess I don't know why Bowser bothered to create a, a mother penguin and a baby penguin but regardless yeah there's not really a good way to drop this baby off you know what I mean it's, it's kind of like you have to no matter what you do you have to waste time with them uh, but it's like I do have so so it is it is true that these D-pad controls are something you you will have to learn. It's it's not like like if you've played a lot of Super Mario 64 and then you go pop in Odyssey or Sunshine, you can immediately just drop into that and there's no learning curve to that whatsoever. I mean, there are a few new moves in Odyssey especially, but still it's like fundamentally the controls are the same. That is not how this is. You you do have to kind of learn to ride a bicycle again, so to speak. And I know that that's not something that everybody's going to want to do. You found my precious, precious baby. Where have you been? How could I ever thank you? Oh, I do have this star. Take it with my eternal gratitude. All right, so we're done with we're, we're done with mass little baby penguin. And there we go. That's another star off the docket. But I do have a few pro tips. Uh, for those who want to learn the D, I do think that if you are used to... Well, that that is kind of the, the eternal problem of this, is that the people who like Super Mario 64 on the, the, the original, like my brother, really like it. And I have learned all of these little tricks that they can only do with the original controls. And it's like, to them, having to learn a new control scheme is first a pain in the butt because they're already used to to being able to do something, and secondly, it's it's like I can't do what I could do before, so this feels inferior to me, and that makes sense. I know what I'm saying, and uh, I'll tell you what, we'll we'll do this one real quick. I need a good head on my shoulders. Do you know of anybody in need of a good body? Please, I'll follow you if you do. Okay, so here's how this one works. This snowball guy will follow you down the slide. So what you need to do is you need to slide all the way down to the head, the, the snowman head at the bottom of the hill without going off track. If you go off track, uh, the, the snowball body will miss the head and then you'll have to do it again. So here he is. 
Oh no, talk about out of body experiences. My body has melted away. Have you run into any headhunters lately? I could sure use a new body. Brr, my face might freeze like this. So it was cold enough to keep his head frozen, but not enough to keep his body frozen. So if you manage to slide all the way down the hill correctly, then the body will follow you into the head and then you win. If is he gonna talk to me? Perfect, what a great new body. Here, this is a present for you. It sure will warm you up. Yeah. So that's that's the star for this this time. This is where we're gonna cut things off for the for the part. Uh, we'll pick up in part three and finish off Cool Cool Mountain with whatever's left. And yeah, so I'll see you guys next time.